loving God. We thank you for this blessed divine service. Thank you for your presence here. Particularly, we thank you for enabling us to worship you along with the summer camp children. May your name be glorified through this meditating time. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Once again, I greet you all in the name of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Actually, we have some places. We have enough places there to come down inside. And particularly a warm welcome to the children who are gathered here. See, I, before I share my message, I would like to do certain things. Everybody's wedding camp in the summer camp. Now, I saw Collins wearing the cap and Kumar wearing the cap. And yesterday, the children also performed an item in wearing their cap. So I thought, why not the pastor also wear a cap? I'm just going to do a little trick. I won't call it magic. You may call it magic. But it's a little bit. Okay, I just need a volunteer. Come. Come. Yeah, I want you to hold uh, this tray here and keep it. Okay. Now I'm going to keep the chocolate on the tree and cover it with a cap. Is the chocolate inside? Let's see. Is here now? Okay, okay, okay. Now what I am going to do is without touching the cap, without touching the cap, I am going to eat the chocolate. Shall I do that? Can I take the chocolate without touching the cap? Hmm? No, no. Say it boldly, no worry. <laughs> I'm not going to trick you. I'm going to trick all the other people. <laughs> okay? Now let's see. The chocolate is inside the on the tray, inside the cap. Now I'm going to eat it without touching the cap. Okay, shall I do it? Nothing in the stick, don't worry. <laughs> okay? I am taking it, taking the chocolate. Did I touch the cap? No. Okay, I am opening the wrapper and eating it. <coughs> Good, very tasty. I ate it, man. Just take the cap and see. Where is it? Ah, it's here. Very good. The chocolate is still here, no? Okay. Now I am going to eat the chocolate. I didn't touch the cap. Did I touch the cap? <laughs> Sorry, you <laughs> go sit down. Okay. Today's topic missing Jesus. So I said missing chocolate. Now I am going to do another one. I have two covers here. Both are empty. Okay, empty now? Okay. The other one? Empty. Okay. Thank God I have this uh, mic here. I'm just going to tie it, that's all. Don't worry. Mm -hmm. The cover is empty, okay? I'm leaving it here. I'll just tie the other one here. Just watch carefully. Both are empty, okay? Now I'm going to take a stick. 
okay it's a hard stick i can tap it it's all stick now i'm going to put this in this cover where is the stick this cover are you sure okay now i'm going to put this stick here where is it are you sure okay good it's here now just imagine this is a cross okay this is a tomb they crucified jesus christ on the cross okay okay i am putting the stick here okay you can see it okay now after his death he was taken out and he was put in tomb he was buried they thought the body of jesus christ is there okay so where is the stick now it's here and imagine that jesus christ was put in a tomb after 3 days he disappeared from the tomb they thought he is there even the women and disciples thought his body is there but he was found somewhere else it's here jesus was not in the tomb you think there is something here no just see it's all nothing inside you may think there's another stick nothing see many people thought jesus body was missing but he rose again he appeared to different people at different times and different places what i am going to share with you is the even that i read in the gospel portion you know about the story two disciples they went to emmaus now emmaus is 7 miles almost like uh, 10 kilometers from jerusalem to emmaus and these people were walking they missed jesus christ in the sense he was there he was talking to them but they thought jesus was missing many a time even in our life we don't recognize the presence of god with us many a time we feel that jesus is missing but he is there i'm going to share with you just three points one people think that they miss jesus christ when people think that jesus cannot do certain things more than what they expect or think he can do that is look at verse 21 there we see the two disciples were talking and telling jesus see there was a man he was a very great prophet his name is jesus to whom do i am telling yaar kitta solranga yes sam kitta solranga they are telling it to jesus you see there was a man called jesus and he was from nazareth we thought he was a great prophet we thought he would redeem israel now he is dead now he cannot redeem israel and they also said see some women went and saw the tomb it was empty some angels told them that he was alive but we don't believe in it see probably they thought jesus was raising many people he how many people did he raise you remember one yesterday skit whose daughter whose daughter whose daughter did jesus raise who was lying on the stage not you is it jairus's daughter you remember the story yeah 
Jesus raised Jairus' daughter. Then he also raised a young man in a village called Nain. And another person, another popular person. Ah, Lazarus, very good, very good. So they thought Jesus was able to raise dead people. If Jesus died, who will raise him? That was their logic. So they thought certain things can be done by Jesus Christ only if he is alive. Even when he was invited to come and visit uh, Lazarus, when he died, he came late and they told him, this is what they said. See, if he had come earlier, before his death, you could have healed him. Now what can he do? But Jesus can raise the dead. So many a time people think that Jesus cannot do certain things. Many a time you also say the same thing. Oh, Jesus can't do this. Oh, Jesus can't do that. No. Jesus can do everything. He is a mighty, mighty God as you sang in the summer camp. God can do things. There is nothing impossible with God. That's why we pray to God. So don't think Jesus cannot do certain things. Of course, he will not do certain things. Suppose you stand in the, on the middle of the ground and say, Jesus, I want to fly. Will he make you fly? No. But if you buy an ad ticket and get into the plane, you can fly. Okay? So, know for sure that Jesus can do many things, but many times he may not do certain things. But know for sure that Jesus can do the things more than what we think. See, those two people thought um, Jesus would redeem the Israel. But he didn't do it in the way they wanted him to do. See, what they thought is that they thought Jesus is the Messiah. He would redeem the people from the Roman Empire. They thought of political Messiah. They thought Messiah would fight with the Roman soldiers and redeem the Israelites from the Pilate or from the Caesar. But Jesus was a different redeemer. He is a redeemer from the satanic empire. He is our savior from sin. He is a savior from all the evil powers in this world. So Jesus is a different kind of redeemer. For you, Jesus is also a redeemer. He can do things more than what you imagine or more than what you think. The second thing that I would like to share with you is that People miss Jesus Christ when they think that Jesus cannot be in certain places and do certain things. See, <clears throat> they were walking down the road. They haven't thought Jesus would walk with them. Because it's a 10 kilometers walk. They never thought Jesus would join them and walk with them for 10 kilometers. Imagine Jesus Christ walking with them walking with them they never thought Jesus would come and join them so many a time people think Jesus cannot be in certain places he cannot do certain things for example can Jesus be in the parliament in the assembly hall where Stalin is sitting our chief minister or where the president or the Modi and Prime Minister and all the people sitting. Can Jesus be there? Can Jesus be in your examination hall? Hmm? Yes. He says yes. Can Jesus be in your house? Yes. When you drive in a car or in a go in a vehicle, will Jesus be with you? Yes. Jesus is going to be with you always. Never think Jesus can disappear from you. There is a beautiful verse that I would like to quote. In Proverbs chapter 3 verse 6. 
Proverbs chapter 3 verse 6. There it says, Acknowledge Him, that is the Lord. Acknowledge the Lord in all your ways. In all your ways, He will make your path straight. So what the Lord wants you to do is, acknowledge His presence wherever you be. Wherever you go, wherever you sit, whatever you do. Those people thought Jesus cannot come with them for 10 kilometers, walking with him for 10 kilometers. They thought his body disappeared, that's all. Jesus is no more, but he was walking with them. He will walk with you. And you can find Jesus Christ, the third one. You can find Jesus Christ when you think, when you invite Jesus Christ into your life. Now what happened finally, we all know, and they were talking, Jesus was talking with them, and they went close to their house, and as they wanted to go into the house, they saw Jesus, they enjoyed the conversation, they enjoyed the way he explained the scripture, so they wanted him to come to his house. So they invited Jesus Christ. Now what happened? They didn't recognize Jesus. Now, you know how they recognized Jesus? When they made him to sit at the table, they kept the bread. Now Jesus took the bread, blessed God, praised God, thanked God, and broke the bread and shared it with the disciples. When he broke the bread and shared it, they recognized Jesus. Oh, this is what Jesus would do. Then he disappeared from them. Dear children, dear brothers and sisters in Christ, whenever you invite Jesus Christ into your life and work, I'm again saying in your life and work, Whatever you do, He will be with you and bless you and enable you to do great things. Let me close with a little story. <clears throat> I told the story to some elders. They didn't know about the story. So I'm saying this again. I know the teachers and the volunteers know it. A little boy was going away from his hometown. He was carrying a bag. In his bag, he had one set of clothes and few sandwiches, okay, some bread. Now, as he was coming out, an elderly person saw him. He asked him, William, where are you going? The boy said, sir, I'm going to the town nearby. My father said he cannot support me. Our family is very big, even though my father works very hard, there is not enough money to support the whole family. So he called me and said, William, now you are grown up, you, why don't you go to the town and make a living? You work there, you earn and you live. If at all you get some more money, you send it to the family. So I am just going to another village. And the elderly person was a captain of a boat. And he said, okay, that's good, William. But before you go, I want to pray with you. And before I pray, I'll give you four advice. How many advice? Four advice. Okay, one. Be a good man. Just repeat after me. Be a good man or a good boy, or a good man. Then secondly, he said, whatever you earn, you give 10% to God. How many percent? 10% to God. That is, we call it tithe. Okay, 10%, one tenth. Whatever you earn, whether it's one dollar or ten dollar, whatever it is, you give to God, one tenth. 
Then thirdly, he said, make an honest soap. Because William said, I know how to make soap, so I'm going to join the soap company. So he said, make an honest soap. That is a quality soap. It should not be a mediocre type, okay? Not second quality, best quality. You make the soap in a best quality. And fourthly, he said, be an honest man. Whatever you put on the wrapper, the weight, the soap should have the same weight. If you put 100 grams, 100 grams on the wrapper, the soap should weigh how much? 100 grams. So if you do all these things, God will bless you. Say they both knelt beside the road, on the side of the road, and the elderly person blessed him and sent him away. Now this William came to the town and joined in a soap factory and he started working and when he got the salary he gave one tenth to the Lord. He gave the offering. On the first week he just got one dollar. So he gave ten cents to the Lord. And slowly his salary increased. As his salary increased, he always kept the percent, 10 percent, 10 percent, 10 percent to the Lord. Then one day came, the factory owner called him, William, you are working very hard. I know you are a sincere person, very honest person. I want to make you a partner in this company. So he became a partner in the company. And after some years, the owner said, see, I became very old. I'm giving this factory to you. You take it. You run it, he said. William was so happy. He just came to the town with just one bag and few sandwiches. Now he became the owner of the factory. But all through his life, he kept the promise. He was always a good man. He gave one tenth to the Lord and he made an honest soap and he was an honest person. He maintained his integrity. Now the story ends. As he grew old, he got married, he had children and slowly his income increased and he started raising the person to the Lord. First he gave 10 percent, isn't it? Now he started giving 20 percent, then 30 percent, then 50 percent. Then finally, after spending all his expenses, he gave 100 percent to the Lord. All the profit to the Lord. This is not an imaginative story, it's a true story. The full name of William is William Colgate. William Colgate. You know the Colgate paste? Okay, yeah. William Colgate. Dear children, Jesus is always with you. Sometimes people think they are missing Jesus Christ. Jesus is not with them. No, Jesus is always with you. You can experience his presence when you are at home, in school, in examination hall, when you travel, Wherever you go, you can never, never miss Jesus Christ because he is going to be with you always. Okay, let me finally end with another one. Uh, where's the little boy? Shelly, can I ask you to come? Come. Okay, I'll take this out because this will distract you. <coughs> okay. Okay. I'll take the same thing. Keep the tray with you. Uh, yeah, they made I don't know with many chocolates, so I'll keep one chocolate here. I'm going to keep the cap on top. Is the chocolate inside? Are you sure? Just see. Ah, yeah, it's there. Now I'm going to do something different. 
don't think I'm just going to repeat the same thing. Okay? Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to eat the chocolate and make it come under the hat or the cap. Okay? Are you sure it's there? Okay, it's there. No, it's not there, no? Okay, now I'm going to eat this chocolate. and make it come under the cap. Okay? Just see whether it's under the cap. No? Are you sure? Okay, 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 okay. No problem. I can make it come under the cap. Now the chocolate is here, under the cap. <laughs> Don't worry, this is just a trick. <laughs> Thank you very much.